Hello, everybody. This is the Rare Podcast. I am here with my friend, Ivan Buva. Thank you for having me, man. I just want to say, Pocari Sweat sponsored me because I drink your drink a lot. Shout out to you. It's a really good hydration drink that I've discovered in Japan. Buva don't really drink you, so don't worry about him. But Rare Heart, we do. Anyway, uh, we are here in the Rare Heart Podcast. I have Buva. Buva, it's your first podcast. First, my friend, first. First podcast. How you feel? Excited. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, man. I ain't got nothing crazy. I don't have nothing crazy. I'm not worried. At least I don't think so. Who knows? I feel like a lot of fans, boosters, are looking forward to hear you talk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Yeah? Yeah. Because you talk a lot? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was like, Kini Bebe, who talks the most in locker room? The whole team said me. <laughs> I think the same answer is here, hey, too. L- let me ask you something, though, before <laughs> we start, though. Like, um, do you ever think, like, when we're on the bus and we're taking the bus trips, like, you know you be on the phone, right? Yeah. Like, you be having a whole conversation. You don't think about yeah. the whole bus sometimes? Not really. I, 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 I know, because I had to put my headphones on, like, like why is Booba having this conversation? Then, you, then you're talking to your, in your language, and it's just like, here you go. You're just having the full. You're like kicked back and comfortable, and like you at home. <laughs> I'm like, what is wrong with you? And then one time, one time, you sat behind me. Oh my God. Oh yeah, the Quan put me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I told, I told the Quan, hey, th- don't do that no more. Uh, uh, that's why he threw this. Yeah, yeah don't do it. No more. Don't do it no more. Like, no, don't do it no more. So anyway, anyway, besides all that, like, uh, is there any books you've been reading? Like any books you read in the last like month or two? Uh, not really. Not really. I, I'm stuck with the books last month or two. Yeah. The last book I read was like somewhere in January. Five love languages. Five love languages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the last book I read. I feel like I read this one maybe. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, definitely. It's a good book. Is it a good book? Mm, solid, solid. I, solid. Yeah, it, it's a good, but you know, since I'm like not like. Uh, I feel like I know the author, maybe. Yeah, he's. Uh, I don't know who is the author, but the guy who is uh, who is writing it, like he sometimes in some involved too much the church in it, and I didn't like some examples. But I like overall good this book. Okay. Book is good, not like it's hey. overall it's good. I like it overall. Like okay. it's make me realize some stuff that I didn't wasn't aware of mm. before. So what's your love language? Yeah, that's a good question. I can find myself in all five love languages. Okay. But like so let me just remind like five is like gifts, words. Touch. Touch daughter. What do you like? What would you need? Like, you don't got to give me all five. What would you no, need? I'm just like... Uh, like what? So, basically, I like, like, all five of them. Mm-hmm. But, like, depends on which, like... Like, uh, let's say, area or relationship mm-hmm. like some has more values than the others mm-hmm. but let's stay with normal relationship woman man woman relationship yeah i feel like it's like uh, the stuff you do for me and the physical touch mm. okay like service I mean, like service or I don't know how to say that on, 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 on English. Yeah, no, it's not. You, you said the correct thing. You yeah. said the correct thing. It's not like you didn't say the correct thing. Yeah. You said the correct thing. So I did forget something oh, before we actually start. I was wondering why you're doing that before every. Ah, oh, because like it brings a good energy, man. 
You know, you don't want. Where you discover this? Like, where is like? This is this is about more spiritual. spiritual. This is more spiritual. Like, it was a time where I was very in a dark spot, dark mm -hmm. place in my life, mm -hmm. and I had to refine my. I had to, like I had to find myself again, and this is why. Like when you asked me before, like it's like how can you just be by yourself? Like how can you? Just manage. Most of my life, I've been like by myself. So, like, I had a, like when I was in Europe, I was by myself. When I got to college, I was. I mean, don't get me wrong, I had people that was around me. I know what you mean, it's but it's uh, but um, yeah. At this point, I was like, I just needed to like find myself again, and um, I just kind of went back. This is when I started meditating, like really meditating, like really finding myself and just kind of like being big on energy frequencies and weight like and just getting the feel for people I'm just I'm very observant anyway but you know just when I come into any building like when I first came in this place I sage it because mm -hmm. I get rid of all the negative energy whatever like you don't know like what people what people can bring into like a place they can just what type of energy they have in that type of place it could be negative and I don't want that around me through, through, like you read it somewhere or like yeah you can read it you can I read I read I read a lot of spiritual books I read a lot of things so I don't know how to get so much in details about it but like I, I read a lot of books I I study it myself like I learn it I'm, I collect stones I collect crystals so like and I've been in that and I have like a I have a chakra book like I know like I, I start to study it and start to learn and start to watch and the people that the people that I'm around at are around me, they're kinda involved in the same thing. So we kinda we kinda talk and we Because have I wanna I wanna try one thing. It's like kinda sp spiritual thing. Like they said like shaman is doing it, like parent shamans. Mm -hmm. So the the one age talk about it like he get, you need to like twelve days eat a certain type of diet mm -hmm. so you can clean your body and then like you and some random people like go on that certain spot. I don't know in Peru, but he did in uh, Belgium. The guy came about. Mm -hmm. He gave you something to drink mm -hmm. that's gonna put you in sleep. And he said like he gets so much visions. To not go in details, when he wakes up, when he mother, it was during the night, so his mother also was sleeping. She had the same dream. Like they connect on some deeper level or yeah. whatever. So like, like that's what I want. Yeah, to you to you can do. get some clarity. Like, I and mean, that's what meditation. That's like this is like kind of what that path is on. Getting some clarity, like finding yourself, finding peace within yourself. And I think a lot of times, as people, we need to find peace within ourselves because we find that peace within ourselves. A lot of things that's going on in the world when it stresses us out. Well, you know, a lot of people can find it. You know, then and that's and that's and that's the struggle that we all deal with. We all dealing with it. But you know, you try hard. You try to find the the things that can bring you peace, and you start doing things that that helps you with that. That brings you some happiness. True, true, true. So to start the podcast off, <sighs> your episode, I thought that it'd be a great way because we had many conversations before. So. It can probably, it can hit home a little bit, but I feel like it's good. So the first question I have to ask you, is growth important? Growth is important. You have no idea, man. That's why we're here. Like I always like, since I'm working now, so she, she I met her first for meditation but like she got certificate for other stuff that she's doing. It's not like classic talk to psychologists. Like are you talking about just psychologists? Huh? What are you told you talking about? Uh, the lady that I'm working with meditation. But, okay, okay. But like now, like she's not like psychologist. She's like meditation and other stuff mm -hmm. connect to the medication, similar to what you have with this, let's say, spiritual things, but. Mm -hmm. In other way, it's like cleaning the emotions with different techniques that is not like just talk like 
not shrink, but to say, yeah, 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 not, yeah, not just go to talk and realize it. It's like different kind of methods. So I always tell her like, like, like I feel like for me, I feel like like I don't know to grow up with thirty. Like I feel like it's, it's, like I should do it before. But mm. like she said, but you weren't ready, and that's like, that's like. She, she she's right because you know like I grew up with my grandparents plus my mom so their parents when I moved out I immediately moved with my wife and now this year the first year I'm alone and you know like you realize some stuff and I feel like this was like a tipping point for me to become like growth because like we talk about it like that I'm always like in need of something, mm. but I never like, and I think it's irritated people in before in clubs because I was doing it unconsciously. I was not like, nobody's going to tell me. They just said, ah, you're like spoiled child or whatever. Mm. They didn't pay too much attention. But now when I'm getting older and I realize my actions, it's like, like I grew up with I said, like, I grew up with 30, I was supposed to be, like, adult with, like, maybe 24, 25, and you're, like, actually supposed to be mature, but, but it's, it realized me a lot of stuff, you know, like, basically, you know, like, I knew it with the 14, 15 years old, what I really want in my life, but I kind of get lost in track, like, like, that kind of get lost by the years and by the way where I'm going because with 14, 15, I, let's say I was, I had a freedom, you know, you know, like you, I, I could always go anywhere without asking, you know, mm -hmm. like I could yeah, yeah. decide by myself with 14 years old, you know, like, but as I was getting older, like my mom and then like my wife, they always like said, you cannot do it like that. You need to like think about it. And I couldn't like make mistakes like with 14, you know. So I just kind of like pre press it away, like put it away and start like, okay, focus on basketball. We didn't worry about if I'm getting mistakes or not. I was just focusing on the job. But for me, it was like, my goal is like to be free. But when I mean free, you cannot do whatever you want. But like, you can feel like peace, inner peace with you. And freedom is like, if you like feel like to do something with someone, nobody can tell you not to do it. Yeah. You need to be aware of the consequences and do it by yourself. But I feel like in this world, like a lot of people like to tell you, ah, you cannot do this. You cannot, like everybody has opinion about what you're going to do. Mm. And I think like that restrict people of their like, they're like we what they like to do mm -hmm. because they're feel judged by other people which they think they're important to marry their opinion but in the end you are unhappy with yourself because you didn't fulfill your wishes mm -hmm. i'm not saying like we talk about reasonable wishes not like doing some stupid stuff so and in the end what like causes is like you damage yourself in the end you are unhappy with yourself and then it happens just growth and you cannot put a lot in carpet. Then, you know, some people explode and start fighting or do some other stuff. And it's all start because they are, they are like uh, putting their feelings or unhappiness, like ignore them, ignore them. And you cannot do it all the time. You need to like make yourself happy. If you cannot yourself make yourself happy, nobody's going to make you happy. Mm. And you cannot help other people if you're not going to be happy with yourself. And that's, in this year, I learned a lot. I mean, I know I was hurt, but in this recent few months that you see me, you know, like what I realized, and it's really, you know, like I didn't put it like a lot of, a lot of aware of this. In the practices, before I was like hate losing, I always had like this eruption of emotions because let's say deep down I was not happy with myself. So whatever happens on the court it, or outside of the court on the court when I was losing, it's kind of reflecting because I couldn't like
put it away no more. So once a week, I would like, you know, just relieved with kind of volcano. And then, you know, people get used to it, but it's, it's not good for environment. If I'm like that, some other people think it's okay, they're going to be like that. But in the end, it's, I think, bad environment. And what I realized like recently, I can be aware of it and control it. So I don't need to like make other people nervous and like scream and whatever I do because someone make mistake or whatever that triggers that negative energy out of me. And I think that's like in this year that like that melta, mental awareness is like my, let's say the biggest achievement that I did this year for me, which I was not like, I know like we are all here for basketball and this, but you know, mental health is pretty important these days. For sure. Um, yeah, I'm saying we all, you, you, we all, you're here for a reason. And you know, I told you that. Yeah, before. no, 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 we meet for a reason, man. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and, it, and it's just not me and you, it's just like you came to Japan for a reason. Mm. Yeah, for a job, but it was bigger than what you thought it was going to be. True, so, true, true. And that's one thing we have to realize. Sometimes our situations are, are bigger than what we may think. Is. We, we, we think it's for one thing and one thing only. But, you know, we're going to go through circumstances. We're going to go through obstacles that's going to help mold us and help us grow. So, yeah, for sure. Like, definitely. I definitely seen. I, I, we played against each other in, in best touch. But I ain't, I, I ain't know you like that, you know mm. what I mean? So, like, but to being around you and watching you from the beginning of the year and how you are now, you have you have matured, you have grown in, in, in a lot of areas, and you should be proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. Thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank no you. problem, man. Thank you. <laughs> um, in what ways do you feel you need to grow in? I think, like, in, in the ways that, like, we always talk about it like when we were younger, I had like, let's say in Cedevit, a little bit veterans that kind of a little bit helped me out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in our culture, still back then in, in uh, Croatian basketball, the coaches were older and experienced, so they kind of like were also mentors to you. So they were yeah. like trying to prepare you what's coming up. But you know when you're like 16, 17, like you tell what the fuck do you know? You know the, <laughs> you know more than that. You know how it is with 16, 17. Yeah. But then you realize after he was right. Yeah. But like, what I what I would like now as I'm getting older, about to be 32, like when I have like some younger player or younger team, try to be like, try to help them to try to do less mistakes than I did in my career, you know, like to, to, to show them that like, we all been there, like we all know what you're going through. So with some advice, maybe they will do better than us to try to inspire them. I think that's like, as you're getting towards to the end, like to, to inspire others, I think that's like the biggest thing that you can do, you know, like, Every record that you put up is going to be break one day, but inspiring mm -hmm. the people at the end of the day, I think there is no no bigger satisfaction when someone like tells you like, oh, you know, I remember you, you helped me this year. And mm -hmm. So like, for example, I, got, I had like, I was in Cantu like 10 years ago, imagine, and we played in some kind of special jerseys one game in like some brown jerseys that look like a basketball floor. And there was a one kid asked me the jersey and I give it to him. Ten years later, he still texts me as we still sometimes chat and said, I still got this jersey, you know, I'm a chef now in Milano, about to get like uh, promoted, blah, blah. And I was like, no, that's like, make you feel like uh, happy, you know, that this guy still remembers you for the small things. You just gave him a jersey. Mm -hmm. And he still like remembers the the day, you know, and that's like I think nothing can compare to that feeling, you know, like for sure. I think like you know, I was I, when I was in Brindisi, and I had many many experiences. But I think like this is more so 
something that someone told me. Shout out to Adrian Banks. Hell of a player. And I re- and like he was like he was a cat he was our captain in Brendan C. And he, I don't know how he did it, but he always had some of the most amazing like get ready to play speeches. Like when he got done talking, it's like, yeah, I'm ready to play. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm ready to go play. I'm ready to go. I don't know why, I'm ready to go play. So we was in the cup. And it's right in we was in the cup, in the Italian cup, and he said his speech was, I don't remember it verbatim, but I remember him. I remember what he talked about, and he talked about leaving a legacy. He talked about leaving a legacy because we was in the moment we were about to play, knowing and expect we were gonna be in the in the championship game in the Italian Cup. We're playing against Venice, and we didn't had many many battles with Venice. Like we didn't play Venice in the Super Cup. We played Venice in the regular season. We just going back and forth. So to play Venice again in the Italian Cup, it was like all right, payback time. Like it's like yeah. they beat us in the Super Cup, so let's be, let's beat them in the Italian Cup. And congratulations to Venice because Venice ended up winning the game. Um, but when he had told and he said that like by leaving a legacy, you think about that in just a, a, a bigger scale than just basketball. Like how you just said, you you wanted to when it's all said and done for us, it's about what we can give back to the people that either want either want to play basketball or just anybody that is just inspired or see us because at the end of the day we're put on this platform for a reason. Yes. So you gotta use that to the best of your abilities. When you think about it, when it's all said and done, you look back, and this is what Agent was talking about, when it's all said and done, you look back like, what's your legacy going to say about you? Like, mm-hmm. is it all going to just be about sports? And I like, it's good to have that, but for for me, it's like, like what like what have you done for other people? Like, what, what did you do to make the world better? What did you do to change? It don't have to be the whole world. It, it just can be changed one person. I got this saying for myself. It's like one kid at a time. Like, one person at a time. Like, change, what can you do for one person? Like, that, that's all it's going to be. Because that one person may be, like you said, it may be, may be the next NBA player. Maybe, don't, don't know, maybe the next president. And you just never know what you have done for that. So, like... The biggest thing is like you gotta respect everybody. Respect everybody. No, true, true, true. true. I really, I realized this like this year the most. You know, like the before years, I wouldn't pay attention to others. I was like focusing on myself. It's normal. And I was like try to, you know, like try to let's say earn as much money as I can, and like my like the thing is like. To have some kind of ultimate freedom these days, unfortunately, the only thing they can afford, uh, can give you this is the money. You know, like if you have enough money, you don't worry about out, outside yeah. uh, outside stuff. But, you know, like this year, I got a friend that I know I was playing with him when we were younger. He's younger than me a few years. And he always sometimes called me when I told him, you always call me when the forest is already burned out. Like mm. you never call me when fire starts you call when fire is the end to save what we can save mm. he said yeah i know i know but you know i don't know what to do and then like, he got like some kind of neat problem and you know he never played in let's say some some big clubs and uh, like make some big money he was like decent player let's say mm. and i said like I'm, i don't want you to go to surgery you had like 26 years old i said but how are we going to fix it i said okay let's let's go to this guy in Germany that I'm going every summer, he said, I cannot afford it. I said, don't worry about it. Just go there. Just go there because I was like, if you go to surgery, this might be the end for you. Like, you don't know how you're going to return. Like, one surgery, other surgery, and that's it. You know, like, this, like, surgery is from the cartilage, like, six months plus. So, you know, if you do it, like, in January, the question is going to be ready for the summer camp. And who is going to sign? You already missed two months. Yeah. So, basically, you didn't play the whole year, and you don't have, like, resume, like, I don't know, Sergio Llull, that was 10 years in Real Madrid, so you can sign somewhere. Yeah. And he said, yeah, okay. And now he said, that was the best decision I make. And I was like, listen, I'm glad that I helped you, man. And I see him dunking and smiling, and I was like, you can't, like, that's like the biggest thing you can do, man. Like, to, to see someone else happy because, like, you just help him in a small way. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like... That's, that's, 
that's everything. That's it, it gives me it gives me chills hearing that story because anytime I anytime I can make a child smile, it's like it's like one of the best films ever. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. making someone else happy is probably yeah, is true. is what really what real life being rich for me is. Yeah, like true. seeing other people, seeing my friends accomplish their goals and me actually trying helping them achieve what they want to achieve that is like rich for me that is like what of course we need money of course we got to do these things but that like that gives me a sense of purpose yeah no money is like it's important but it's not everything you know like for sure so we talked about you said you know you know your mental your mental is something that you that you grew in mm. but like is that the only thing that is that the biggest area that you've grown or is it something else? So the question, my question to you is like, what is the biggest area you had, you had to grow in? We talk about like, what, what, what areas we have mental, physical. And that's what I'm saying. Like I, I knew you spoke on m mental being something that you, that yeah. was like a big thing. Like is mental, is the mental area was the biggest thing you had to grow in or is it something else? That's my question to you. But I would say, like, it's related to mental. I would, like, say that, like, I realized that I don't need someone next to me so I can be, like, enjoy life or happy. You feel me? I was, like, all my life I was surrounded with people, you know. I was never literally alone like, like you. Like you said, you start from college early. I was never alone. You know, like, I always... I always had my wife, my ex-wife. So wherever I go, I had her. So I was never really alone. So, you know, like it's not the same when you're in a, like, uh, in a bus and, you know, you go like from a trip and you're going home, someone is going to be home. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're going to walk in its empty apartment. And for me, that was like the toughest this year, you know, like that was like really big crisis, like going home and that empty apartment, like... You know, for me, it was strange because, like I said, I grew up in a house with four people. Always was someone home that you can talk to. And just come home, and there is, like, a quiet. Nobody's there. Nobody's, like, ask you anything. That was, like, you know, to realize that sometimes it's good to be alone, that you need to be alone. It's kind of like, I would say, the biggest thing that I achieved, you know. Like, now I can, like, let's put it like this. You know, like, there are always people saying people are dating with someone to, ha to have someone, mm -hmm. just to not be alone. Mm -hmm. And some people are unhappy in relationship, but they don't want to leave because they're going to be alone. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's a wrong perception, but a lot of people are not aware of that. They just, like I said, like put at this unhappiness or not like they're not satisfied with themselves on a carpet and not dealing with it because they run away. I mean, it's not easy to face it with your own fears on comfortable situation. It's the toughest thing to do. But once you deal with it, you're going to feel better and you're going to like realize what you what what does make you happy and you know a lot of times like now like i realize dating in 20s and 30s are different you know like for sure <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm like i was listening to stand up comedy uh, like comedies about this but i didn't realize until now you know it's 20s uh, like yeah we was we you young, just don't feel like some just, stuff but young. but now when i'm like where what i you know what like, you want I would not say I know what I want, but I I know what I don't want. Yeah, for so sure. it's close that, enough. That, that's 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 basically what I'm saying. Like you know yeah. what you want because you is the things you don't want is yeah. not what you want. Like yeah. you're, not, you're like no, I don't want this. Like so. Yes. Yeah, so you know, like any other person that is gonna be my partner or friend, I don't want them to dry my energy. Mm -hmm. You know, like people sometimes don't realize that some people like dry your energy out. For sure. And 
you might not like realize it, but you make, you know, you think you have a great time, but you come like so tired after that hangout, there is no like, like, you don't ask yourself why it's like that, you know, like, so, I now like, you know, we had this conversation, you said you're always testing people, you always try, now I know what you mean, you know, I didn't like get it at the first, but now as I'm like moving on and uh, like realizing some stuff, it makes a lot of sense, you know, because the life circle you have around you, that's going to define you. You know, like I always take my mom, for example, she's living in the same neighborhood, surrounded with the same mentality people. And I try to tell her that's not like you're always like whining, a bad job, bad salary, bad, bad. But you're not doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. And it's not her, but it's a lot of people that I know doing that because the environment they're surrounded is the same. They're mm -hmm. just whining, ah, oh, there is no money. There is no, there is. Just the problem is you're willing to do some changes and get out of the comfort zone. Yeah. And a lot of people are not doing it. So. If you surround yourself, it's pretty simple. Like, if you surround yourself with the five successful people, most likely you're going to have the same ambition trying to be successful with them. If you survive, uh, surround yourself with the five, I don't know, douchebags that every day is in a bar drinking beer, most likely you're going to be every day in a bar drinking beer. You know, like, it's all about the, the circle you made around yourself. Yeah. It's going to define you, you know? But in order to change it, you need to sometimes change environment. Like if you travel, that's changing environment. If you move to another city, that's changing environment. You're gonna realize that stuff. But if you're stuck on the same place, difficult, my friend. <laughs> difficult. Yeah, you gotta step out your comfort zone. And I think a lot of people have a a major fear of that. Like it's it's change is change is different. Like when you think about it, like. When you got to do something that you normally don't do all the time and you around or you just been in this place, change is going to be very different for you. But like you said, like you have to, to in order to grow, it's some things you're going to have to change in your life, especially if you want something. If you want something more for your life, you're going to have to change whether it's going to be the people that you're around, whether it's going to be a job, whether it's going to be your mentality, Whatever, whatever it is, you're gonna to have to change something. You're not changing who you are because you're gonna be who you are at all times. Yeah, character is is there. You know what I mean? So, but but when you think about what you what you want in life, it's some things you're gonna to have to change. And yeah, and you know, don't get me wrong, but like all these, like what we have, these media platforms, mm -hmm. social media, whatever, mm -hmm. they don't help us to get better. No, nah. they're just like fill us with uh, like you feel me like it's a fantasy, but people don't realize it's a fantasy. It's, it's a fantasy. It's it's fantasy, and you know usually, I mean you realize it too. Like for example, with like let's say the phone is here and we talk about I don't know, left knee problem. Let's say for sure the phone's gonna you go look at your phone. It's gonna has and then I go on Instagram problem. and then they offer me. Pets <laughs> for the knee, like, come on, <laughs> you know, like, uh, that's just another conversation for another day. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. We can talk hours about that. Like, it's just, like, like, I have a whole mindset <laughs> about that. It's just, but like, like the yeah. media is trying to control us. I mean, I read the book, it's called, like, I think Homo sapiens by Orhan Pamuk, Turkish guy, I think. Mm. So basically, like, don't get me wrong, like, so he, he, from our first civilizations until now, he's writing a book. So we as a people, we couldn't have more groups than 10 to 15 people, right? That's the maximum we could control because we were moving from one place to the other because we didn't discover mm. any uh, says plans to grow. And then once we discover What's the name for the bread? The plants in English to make the bread. The bread. The the plant that you grow to make the bread. The plant that you grow to make the bread. Yeah. I, I can't think of it right now. You just threw it, me on the spot. <laughs> uh, okay, but you know what I mean. So we discover some plants. To wheat. Grow. Wheat. Okay. Yeah. Wheat. All right. I couldn't think of it. I, 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 my my, 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 my plant like bread. Yeah. yeah you just. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no, yeah, my yeah, man, weed, like, okay. So weed. when we discover weed, mm -hmm. weed, like, uh, don't get me wrong, it's really tough culture to grow. It's a, it takes a lot of water, a lot of everything, a time to grow. But when we discover, we stop moving. Then we start building the cities. Then from 10 to 15 people, we have like hundreds, thousands of people because we could be at the same spot. Mm -hmm. After that, became like cities, after the countries. Yeah. You know, okay, kingdom, blah, blah. Yeah. But in order to control big mass of people, we, we make religion because religion is the biggest that you can control, the most, the most population. You can, mm. you know, it, same religion, you can relate to someone. Mm. Now, bigger than religion, social media. You can always connect to people with social media on some advertising. Mm. I mean, there is like, there was a documentary on Netflix how they, yeah. make so you know that doesn't gonna help us to be self-aware like what me and you are talking about it's just gonna brainwash us to stay in the same thing and gonna give us something that's like gonna stop us to be self-aware that's my opinion i mean yeah, for know, sure. like yeah. social media is good sometimes to talk with some people yeah, that, that you meet on the way but generally, what is they're using it now? It's not what they make it for. Yeah, it's a bigger, it's a bigger plan, and then we have the time to talk about for sure. Yeah, but it's you a know. bigger plan. I think the, but like you said, I, I would, I would say this. Like I said, it's a fantasy, and some, and people have to realize that you, 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 you have another life outside of social media. You have a, it's a reality outside of that. So like, yeah. <laughs> so the advice, the advice I would give to kids about social media is that be the person, be who you want people to see you as. Like be that person. Because if you sitting here and you're being so, something that you're not. You're going to be unhappy. Yeah. You're going to be unhappy and it, you're going to expose, like at some point you're going to expose, the, the truth is going to expose you. Like, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know. yeah. But yeah, that's like the best. Like, be yourself always, be yourself. no matter what the people think. Yeah, like you don't have to. And I, I have a niece, and I, I have, I had like young, younger, younger kids I know, and they, they, as a kid, you're not thinking about it in that type of sense because you just like got oh, social media. I just want to post. I want to get a thousand likes. I want to have a million followers because yeah. this is what people see. But sometimes that 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 is just it's just a facade. It's all it's all just for show. It's not. It's not real. Some of it is real, but some of it just for show. But that's just oh, true. That's yeah. the reality of it. Uh, what has been your biggest inspiration that either encourage or challenge you to develop yourself? It could be a person. It could be a thing. It could be whatever. I don't know what was my like the biggest like inspiration or challenge. I know, like, it was like really, let's say, messed up situation. I start, I had like a major disease that, so major disease is something that the, the liquid in the ear cannot absorb, right? So it takes like a middle ear that is like your center for balance. So when this attack happens, it can be for a few hours to a few days, depends how strong it is. And basically, you cannot do anything. Like, you just lay down and vomit and what look like it to one spot because, you know, it's your center for balance is under attack, so you cannot, like, really move. That was encouraged me to start do meditation. But I feel like there was, like, a, like, a, like, really last sign of my body that I need to change something because... You realize that I got on the skin sometimes, this like some red floods or whatever. So these red floods is because of the stress. You know, I even like, I had like psorias that sometimes go over their arms and it's all caused by the stress. So when I discovered meditation, you know, like in meditation, you're with yourself and with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And usually I'm the guy that always, you know, I don't have like breaks. I say what I think. Some people, a lot of people don't like it because a lot of people don't want to hear it, someone else's opinion or the truth or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
and you face it for sure, you, you, you have it. And then when you're with your thoughts, you start thinking like deeper version of, like when you like move your thoughts on the side, there's like deeper thing that you like facing it. And I, tr I probably start facing with my fears or with my uncomfortable position, like, and that happened like last year, like around March, because I want to, the, the, the goal of meditation was to reduce the stress because that's the, the thing that activates the mana. It ended up that <laughs> I changed my life completely. I think that was like my biggest aspiration because now after a year from there, I see like my skin is getting better because I grew up in like, I mean, I grew up, I was always under stress. We always understood, but like I had the chronic stress, mm -hmm. private and business wise. Mm -hmm. And I get so used to it that I didn't realize it. And you know, like, how I try to escape it is, you know, to play video games, not to think it, to watch some bad mm -hmm. something that's going to distract you, right? But you, it doesn't dist distract you, it's still here. Mm -hmm. You just like, let's say, delay for some other time. Yeah. And it's always like, my, my face was like really, really red sometimes. And people would ask me like, what's, why do you have a face? I was like, it's stress, but what caused you the stress? And I'm like, Okay, I got like, I don't know, I missed it. Like, I gotta argue with my mom, I argue with my wife. I gotta argue with something happened home that, you know, you just make up things because you don't wanna face it. So, I like when I'm starting, like, let's say open the box or move like the moving uh, pieces to see like deeper, I like. Is for me, it's getting like harder and harder. We talk about it, like the crisis was even bigger than it, when I started. Because when I started, I felt kind of okay, it's all good. But when I was like trying to get my nose so better, it's went even harder, you know. So I think the biggest motivation for me was like to grow up was in like, I think like wrong reasons. It was to fix the manner because it was really a big problem because you never know when it's going to strike you. And when it strikes you, it's paralyzed you. So you cannot do anything. So I was trying to fix that. And then by fixing that, I really changed the whole, whole my life, basically. Like my life changed the whole completely. But I feel like my body sent, sent me the signals. You got to listen to your body. You have to. I mean, the matter, Gabor Mate said that all the time. You know who is Gabor Mate? Say what? You know who is Gabor Mate? Uh -uh. It's the doctor that is always uh, saying that like physical condition is like even more connected to mentally without even thinking. For sure. Like I listened to the podcast and he was in Jay Shetty podcast. And you know, like he was talking like how people put away their feelings and you know like he was saying the example like one lady has I don't know, a cut on the finger and they couldn't stop the bleeding and then he was asking like about her past and then she was always put others in front of herself put her feelings away and that in the end damaged your body because the stress activates some things that the things that protects your body, start attacking. And, you know, it's all like connected because you didn't deal with it when it was time, you know, and it was all by the scratch. I mean, so. You got to listen to your body, man. You your gotta, body's going to tell you, tell you what you need to know. Is it, it, if it, at some point, either you're going to listen to it or it's going to really just make you listen to it. <laughs> true, true. I mean, it is like all the, like, uh, people say the injury is when it happens, any kind is like your body giving signal, I need the rest. Whatever yeah. you're doing, I just need to stop for a moment. Yeah. It's going to take. Before we continue to doing the same it's thing. It's going to take you to chill out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, has expressing yourself help you grow as a person? Instead of keeping everything inside. So have like 
you expressing yourself, like you speaking on how you may feel or what you may think or your thoughts or whatever, has that helped you like grow as a person instead of in like instead of like not saying something or keeping it inside of how you feel? Now yes. Mm. Before I didn't realize that. I even want I didn't want even I didn't know how to even express myself mm. because I didn't wanna I it was a problem to like stand up for me myself, let's say, because I was always, what if I say this, 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 it's going to be like some consequences. It's going to, they look at me a different way. Mm. You know, we got a job from year to year. So if you have something that doesn't, someone that in a club say something that you don't feel right. If you say something back to him, how he's going to reflect. I always think how he's going to reflect. So mm. I was just like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to keep it myself. And then, you know, you cannot keep for long and then you explode and then it's like bigger mess. But now to express myself, to set boundaries, to whoever says someone to you, you need to like set the boundaries, whoever it is, because, you know, like if you don't set the boundaries and express yourself, the people are going to keep pushing. But if you set the boundaries, express how you feel, you're going to feel better and he's going to respect you more. You know, but because if you don't say how you feel, the other person not knowing, and maybe he's gonna keep doing it because maybe they're not aware. Maybe they're aware, but they want to do it. So, like now expressing myself, it kind of make me feel better. I remember the situation we had like in February or wherever after Sun and Wind. We kept talking locker room. Okay, nice talk. And I was like, I pissed. I said what I had to say, mm-hmm. but I felt bad after. And you told me, you don't have to feel bad. But I was like, I felt like how I said, it was not, not the right way. I didn't want to like get in some kind of, or a conflict or whatever. We have some kind of argument or beef or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you tell me, it's okay. You express yourself. I understand you. And I'm like, I was like looking at you like, Who's this guy like? What are you just talking about? Like, <laughs> what just happened? I was like, I was confused. Don't get me wrong, I was confused that moment. But after now, you know, with the time, I get it what you mean. Like, and then when I said it, how I feel it, I don't have problem with other people's reaction because I'm in a peace with myself. If you don't like it because you have some other expectations or whatever, it's your problem, not mine. Yeah. So, in the end, you know, like, it helped me. But at the beginning, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. I think that, I think that, uh, <laughs> with, with, with certain situations, like, I think, like, when it comes down to, like, someone expressing how they may feel, because it could be, I think the situation was, I don't, like, we ain't got to get into detail, but I remember the situation. It's just like, and you're telling me how you feel about something, and you're, like, passionate about it. Yeah. And I see that you're passionate about it. So it's like, for me, I'm looking at, like, okay, like, he's, like, this is something that's bothering him. So let's let's just talk about it. Like, we don't got to, we don't have to be kids about it. We're, I'm grown. <laughs> Okay, so, but you you realize it because obviously you were like more self aware something than me. And you said let's not be kids about it. Let's talk about it. But majority of people say like, "Oh, this fucking idiot! You cannot tell him anything. Nah. He gotta get mad. He got you feel me? Yeah, I know. I, know, I definitely, no, I definitely understand what you mean. But it's just like for me, it's like if you if you have something to say to me, if you're saying something to me, I respect the people. At least try to respect the people and how they feel. So if you feel some way about mm-hmm. something I'm doing, I'm like, okay, tell me. Because like you said, sometimes I don't know. Like I don't know. So I like if you tell me, then I'm I'm aware. Okay, you feel this way about this. Okay, like okay, like, let's talk about it. And it's not even if the conversation. I we're professionals in this business. So like with us, I'm not gonna do nothing to jeopardize either what you have going on or what I have going on. So. I'm going to always find the best solution for both of us because I'm not going to sit here and be even if even if I have an issue with someone like most times it's not me that has an issue with somebody. They have it when I feel like if somebody has a problem and it and it gets to the point where you can't talk it out, then I feel like it's something more about them than you. No, true, true. But like we had like you told me like something that triggers you, I was something triggering you. 
But you know, like we talk about it, like your way of joking. For me now is okay. I even smile, you know, like medical room, and I, I am like I'm in a peace with myself because I know this is coming. But at beginning, I didn't know myself that much. You, you understand? So yeah. whatever you told me, or this clapping, or I was like feeling you're like embarrassing or whatever. And in order to understand others or whatever other people is doing, if you're okay with yourself, the other people cannot harm you. You understand? In the end, you can just tell him, okay, stop and walk away and not having reaction. Mm. But like, if you had reaction, people might use it and start doing it again because they want your reaction. Yeah. I mean, in the end, like, we are like creature of energy. So if I assault you and you get me back, I feed from your energy yeah, yeah. and I'm going to keep assaulting you because this is what I want from <laughs> your reaction. <laughs> But if you, like, understand that it's all humor yeah. and the humor that I like at the end because I like this, like, sarcastic... Yeah, I like uh, joke. Yeah, it's, 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 like, turn it to yeah. things like, like Dequan and, like, you, yeah. like... But you need to realize, like, I get more... Like, I can now control my emotions way more than before. So when the situation you put me happens... My emotions just took over it, and you just like jump on it, like you feel me, like, and that's not a way to deal with the situation. I mean, I see a lot of people still like some just jump on it because emotions get to you, mm -hmm. but the the self awareness is like you need to acknowledge your emotions. You see that it bothers you. Take a deep breath. And then do yeah, what express you. how you feel. Like and then you, you feel, express how you feel. feel some way about it. if it if it's something that is is it changing your mood to the point that you're thinking about it constantly? Then it's time to express it. It's time to get it out to that person. If that person doesn't understand that or they continue to do the same thing, then this is not a person you need to deal with. So you keep yeah. your distance from them. Yeah, and there's no yeah. problem with that. Like, yeah. and if they don't understand that, then they just don't understand it. It's okay. Like, so that's just. That's just what it is. Like, it's just okay. Like, once you understand that, like, you're okay with yourself and what everybody, something said, it doesn't bother you. Like, it's fine. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll be at peace with a lot of more things. You'll find a lot of humor in so much things that happens. True. You'll just laugh. Like, that's why for me, it's like laughing is like one of the, the best things you could do for yourself. Just the la laughing and smiling. Probably one of the two best things you could do for yourself. That in that case, we are the same, but I feel like the language barrier is sometimes stopping us to even laugh more. You feel me? The culture wise and the language, because like, because in Croatia, I'm I'm the only guy who observes and trying to make fun of what happened. Like I'm living through that moment, it's like reactions and whatever. Because you need to laugh. What you get, like? You definitely need to laugh. Like. If you're gonna be like not gonna laugh in your life, what else is there left? Like you're gonna be miserable. True. So, so that's the end of the podcast. But you know, we have your questions. Oh. <laughs> so Q and A. Q and A. Questions and answers. Ah, oh, Q and A. <laughs> <laughs> Can move a dunk. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at this question. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Writing this down, I laughed. <laughs> uh, well, still yes, but it's getting worse and worse. <laughs> I, I have seen him dunk. I give him that. I have yeah. seen him dunk. I have rim grazer. We call that when you barely get over the rim, <laughs> rim, rim grazer. <laughs> Rim Grazer. Uh, who was your favorite basketball player? Nah, when I was growing up, of course, Kobe, man. Kobe Kobe's like my generation, Michael Jordan. Man. Rest in peace, Kobe, man. Yeah. Kobe peace, was Kobe. Kobe was the guy, man. Like little like when I was growing up, you know, when he scored his 80, 81 points, there was not YouTube or Facebook or whatever, at least not in Croatia. So you could only we had teletext on TV. So you like you put TV teletext sports, and then it was news. Kobe scored one place, and you put like 
502 and you're reading about it and there is no video to like <laughs> wow and everybody's like talk about it in the school hey, you know kobe scored anyone hey, you know kobe? i was like yeah dude he told me crazy score anyone yeah wow. man i was like and that was like all kinds of like who can find the information was like a big thing back then you know that's crazy that's crazy what do you pay attention to when you go to the game I don't know, I try not to think about much about the game because I just like, you know, like, I try to see who is on the other side, like, of my position and how it's going to be the game. And not trying to overthink about, like, ah, what if you do it? Blah, 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 because, like, I just then put some scenarios that are not, like, not, they're not going to happen. Just play the game, you know? Yeah. But the 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 most worries is me is like to not underestimate the guy that I'm guarding. You know, like for example, if I know he's like the guy that doesn't have really post up moves or whatever, I sometimes so relax that I don't care what he's gonna do. Like, and then you end up like cooking, cooking <laughs> like <laughs> like have six eight points in the row, and I'm yeah. like. Yeah. Boy, you do it again, and then I need to like get myself, get my things together, and like, okay, it's enough now, you know. Like, That's funny, <laughs> you know. But I like to see, like, and I want to see, like, in a Kante how it is, because Kante defines a lot in basketball, you know. Like, if the guy doesn't like the contact, it's gonna be easy game for you. But if he doesn't back up from contact, is the question who's gonna back up first. And usually I never met, the only one guy that never did a backup so far in my career from the contact is Jack Cooley. He is the guy that is always wants to be in contact. And he's the like one of the rare person. <laughs> Jack loves contact. <laughs> Jack is the rare guy. I play with Jack in Germany and listen, people hated Jack. Yeah. I, and I understood why, but I was loving it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Jack is the guy that I'm like. I'm, I'm like Jay. I'm always in a contact. You know, I always duck in, ceiling, take position. Yeah, that's rebound. true. That's true. But you need to realize, and I learned that from Meta, like Ronald Test. He was like two months in camp too. He's like, even though you're not gonna get the ball, you're gonna make him tired. And a lot of people, and contact gets you tired. And if you get used to, to play your contact. You just like push the guy out of the court because he's not gonna do the good screen. He's not gonna roll rebound. Yeah. He's gonna try to save the energy, and you're like, you're being disrupted. Yeah. yeah, and you just like pushing it, and in the end, you just always kick him out of the court. And the Jack is the only one. He's always there, regardless how much we hit to each other. He's <laughs> always there. <laughs> it's crazy, man. He's a rare guy, like yeah. very rare guy that I met. Yeah, well, you. It, when it talks about like this, the the best way I can explain how you can play defense good is just be disruptive. Just yeah, be yeah. always just if you know the play, just be there. Just be there and just bump the guy. Yeah, bump get him the, out. Get him out. Get him out of the direction. Yeah, bump the guy. Defense. Hit him on a box out. Yeah, play good defense and... for sure. It'd be easy. Like, how did you stay motivated when you were seriously injured? The thing is, I was I was really not thinking about basketball when I was injured. Because this year, I might think the last basketball, the whole year. You know, I was, like, really obsessed with past years with basketball. You know, there was, like, I watched, like, 10, 15 games a week. Like, EuroLeague, Euro Cup, my league, you know, whatever in Europe was playing. I was watching, especially if some of my teammates were playing, I would watch. And when I get this first injury... I don't know what happened, but I was like, make a piece of myself. This is like your four or five months out of the basketball. Like, and like, since it was the first, my first injury in my career in general, like this, this type of injury, I really worked like my, like every day extra just to get back. Mm. And when this moment was coming, you know, I was always like, Oh, well, I'm going to be the same. Well, I'm going to be able to do the stuff that I do. But I'm like, you know, I, how is my ankle is going to be? I, I was like, then I find out Justin Cobbs got broke his ankle, Stanton kid, they all got screws. I was like, it's how you feel. 
Like, did you still have them? You know, I was like trying to get more infos. Then when the day like show up for basketball, I was like really motivated. I know you guys were like in, I was like in different moment than you guys. You had like basically the whole season with with this like negative score, all things that happens. I didn't even was on attacker. I came and David was the coach. So for me, I was like in a new in the season and like I felt like more excited. And I felt happy that I could, like, again, play the basketball. But it was, you know, still, now my ankle is okay. But it took some time, you know. I didn't, like, I always called my physio and said, like, oh, I can't steal. I can't dunk still. Well, right then, he said, that come the last. You're not going to be able to dunk next month or so. Maybe even, maybe until the next season. You don't, don't worry about it. It's normal. And I'm like, how oh, is normal, man? It's not feel normal. Because in your mind, you can still do the stuff. But your body can't. But stay motivated. It was pretty simple. You know, I got a coach. Bojan Markovic, legendary coach. Three EuroLeague with Yugo Plastica back then in the 90s, blah, blah, blah. So we do some exercises. He stopped me. Stop, please. Stop, please. And guys, you're not doing 100%. We are looking at him. Do you anybody know how to play piano? Do you can leave from playing piano? Do anybody know anything else to do except basketball? You know, look at it. Right, no? So, this is your job, man. Do the 100%. Because you don't know anything else to do. So, do 100%. So, this is the only thing I still know. But that, that was like keeping motivated. I don't know anything else, so stick to your guns, man. He doesn't do 100% at practice. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds good right now, but he doesn't do 100% at practice. Don't listen to him. <laughs> he doesn't do 100%. <laughs> Who are you friends with in the lakes? Friends in the lakes? Yeah, who are you friends with with Sheikah Lakes, the team? That's a tough question, man. I think I got a good relationship with all of them, but like closer. I mean, tough question is like friends define the friends. Like, yeah, like there's people that you like to hang out with or talk. Oh, with. yeah, and okay. Like, I, we don't, we don't, we're not going to say deep. You can't have like best yeah, friends. Yeah, like, we just no, no, be true, here for like true, a year. True, like, true. <laughs> but I think like my opinion is like I have everybody at least some kind of good relationship. Yeah, but the people that are most have recently you. It was not a case, but I was missing five months. Uh, Kai and uh, Keith and Dequan was like the person that I like spend the most time in the like team. Okay, that's all you had to say. Yeah. You didn't have to put all the. Uh, it, it we can, we can, we can, we can cut it. <laughs> you didn't have to put all the whole like. Yeah, recently true, it wasn't true. you or something like. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, no recently that. because. I was missing five months. That 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 was the. I was not like with the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's different when you are missing. Okay, all right, that's cool. I guess. Is there anything that surprised you about living in Japan? Oh, it surprised me at the beginning. Like what? The calmness. The who? The calmness. Oh, the calmness. Yeah, yeah. It was like really. You know, European life, European lifestyle, I don't know about American lifestyle because I never lived in America. I was only in Dallas for like 10 days so that I'm not capable to talk about lifestyle in a, in a, in a, in a state, in a cities. But like my city, Zagreb, that has 1 million people and the cities that I was living in Europe, I feel like everything is so in a rush. Like everybody is like somewhere needs to get, everybody, you know, like... Mm -hmm. The, the tensions, the stress out, like, like in a hurry, pressing horns, you know, like, especially in Turkey, you know, horn, to press horn is like normal, so it's like tensions a lot. Mm -hmm. Here I feel people are like calm, they just, like, like, even if you're late a little bit, they don't make such a big deal about it. Like, everywhere I play before, if you're late, it's like, I don't know, it's such a huge thing. Here, they don't, get a lot of tension for it you know like so the calmness is really what buys me like 
Yeah, they're not going to be mad about it. They're just going to give you that fine. Listen, the only fine they give is David from all this stuff. You, I, you, I was late, I think, even. I was late. Let's say I was a little bit late for the doctor appointment. They didn't give me fine. I was late five minutes for that. Yeah, well, that's doctor's appointment. This is yeah. not, we're talking about practice. Yeah, only David gave me fine for great. And he gave me fine because I was in any time fitness and I came 35 minutes to the practice warming up in the weights because we had the practice in the gym where there's no weights. And I was like, I didn't know I need to be 45 minutes because in Shiga, you don't need to be 45 minutes. I always go there in the weights. I'm always there. I, mean, I don't need to be 45 minutes on the court. I just show up like 40 minutes on the court. And it's like, ah, it's different. You're already in the gym. Ah, okay, well, I'm going to pay the fine, man. It's all good. <laughs> what do you like the best about Japanese food? What I like the best? Mm hmm I think the quality of the food. I don't know why, but I always like... So... This is my theory, like, I mean, my theory, that's what I think is like, in a world, like, the top economics always got the best product, right? Mm. Best quality of the food. And, like, here, I feel like everything that you eat, wherever you eat, it tastes really good. You don't have, like, in Europe, or in my, like in Europe, when you like need to eat like good meat, you need to go in a certain spots because if you go into some kind of average restaurant, the meat's not gonna be that good. Mm -hmm. But here, I feel like you can go, you know, average restaurant and still eat really good food. And like the quality of the food really, I like it. I really like it. That's good. That's good. I would say like, on the road, like most of the time. Okay. The hotel. Nagoya, Nagoya. No, the, the, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm not going to talk bad about it, but it's one hotel we stayed at in Nagoya is not the move. For, it's not the move for food. Nah. It's not. Nah. But I can say, like, majority of the hotels that we majority, stayed in, yeah. the, food was, the food was good. Like, I, I, I was not, like, referred to the hotels we stayed. I just referred, like, the, the place we're living at the stores. Mm -hmm. Because, like, in, um, let's say, Lithuania or Italy, some fruits or whatever doesn't taste like it's fresh or whatever, like plastic. I don't know. What I mean, you can tell it's not like organic grow. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when I was living in Turkey three years, you know, like Turkey is the country that really has a good like fruits and vegetables through the year, which I guess is because everything goes Asia, Europe eventually goes to Turkey, so they always can have like good stuff. So. But yeah, the quality like in the stores and in the restaurants. Hotels and even yeah, some hotels were like <laughs> mm. which player was the best in the match? I guess like that's the question is asking like which player was best that you played against, maybe? The the best player I could play against? Maybe that's the question. I don't know. Like the toughest for me or like his career like nah, just whatever you feel is best to say like trying to think i play like a lot of a lot of good players you know like but that i play against But I would say, like, the, the I would go, like, for his career team and this. I would, like, say Shermanini. I play with him and against him. And I think he's, like, right now I cannot think any better, but I think he's, like, the best player that I play against, you know, like, two-time EuroLeague champion, MVP, ACB, you know, okay. et cetera, et cetera. His career, so I think, like, he's... Respect. Yeah. What spots do you recommend in Shiga? Spots? Yeah, like you know, places to go. Places to eat, maybe. Kona, Hawaii. Three mm. pancakes, Buwaru. They have good pancakes, man. The macadamia pancakes. Shout out to Jacob Wiley. 
Oi, put me the on. best hot sot white yeah, sauce. Yeah, that is that was some good. I ain't never thought macadamia pancakes. I like macadamia, but macadamia pancakes are really, really good. Yeah. They do have like Conan's good. I almost went there the other day. I ain't been there in a minute. Mm. I ain't been there in a minute. Uh, where, <laughs> where is the restaurant where you often go to eat? It's in a brunch mall. It's ramen. Recently, I'm I'm there like. Twice a week, at least. Mm. Listen, ramen is like I like ramen a lot. Yeah, it's the ramen spot, like right here. It's really, really good. Uh, we we going right? I want to try it. We it's go. really good. It's really good. My man's. He's like a she good she good guy. So yeah. he's, a, he's a, he, really good. Hope you like it. If you don't, then. That's so, your loss. That's <laughs> <laughs> your loss. Uh, were you tall when you were little? Actually, yeah. I, w- I had a phase of growing up. Like, grow. Yeah? Yeah. When I was, like, I was one of the tallest since we started school. Mm. And then... Everybody catch me up, and then I start again grow, and then I was tallest by the like uh, eighth grade of uh, seventh grade of junior school, mm. elementary school, excuse me, elementary school, and then everybody like even passed me, and then summer between elementary school and high school, that two months, three months, I grew up like twenty centimeters, and I left everybody behind. <laughs> Yeah, I was like two meters and 60, That's funny. 65 kilos, man. That's right. You was light. Light, like light, a little light. stronger wind. Light. <laughs> Lightweight. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Aren't Japanese houses small? Isn't the kitchen low and inconvenient? So aren't Japanese houses small? She said. Oh. Uh, Listen, I'm I'm the guy that's too thin, so for me, generally, a lot of things are small and not not comfortable in this world, but I get used to it now. I got, like, bigger apartment, but the first one I get, it was a little bit smaller, and I need to get used to it because in Europe, we like to have, like, in America, everything spaced out. But, you know, like I said, a lot of things for me is, like, Small inconvenience <laughs> because I'm like too thin, so I get used to it. It's not not like it was not a big deal. I understand. Are you comfortable living in Japan? Yeah, I like Japan a lot, man. especially for this calmness. This calmness is like the best ever. Man. He's only saying that just to get views. Nah, nah, nah. Listen, listen. Listen, I really, I really, you know, like, let me put it like this. You know, I went out in Japan a few times and been around, uh, uh, walk around the cities a few times. I felt same safe as in my home country. I don't think anybody's going to do anything to me in Japan. I don't know. That's my feeling. Maybe it's irrational, but I don't, it's like, I consider it like a safe and like for me it's pretty like nice country to live in. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Japanese sweets. Do you like? Some of them, yes, yeah, some of them no. Do you know the names of them? Ah. Uh, oh wait, wait. I don't know the names. I like the, they have like, they have like a pudding or something jelly with the fruit mm-hmm. inside. That, that, that's, that's not bad. That's good. They, they have like, uh, I tried some like, uh, I don't know, strawberries inside, inside the strawberry, outside of the strawberries, like some, some like gummy sweet. That's actually good. Yeah, it's solid because I'm not a big fan of gum. I, I like this. Like, I like to call it like uh, wet candies that she doesn't need water after it, like Kinder Pinguin and that kind of stuff, like puddings. I, I like the, I'm the more of that type of guy. You're a cake type of guy. Not every cake. 
pancakes. Pancakes, yeah, but you know, strawberries, Nutella, and that stuff. <laughs> Describe where you come from. Small, beautiful country with uh, great beaches, beaches to swim to this, and nice girls. And that's it. You know, at first, when you said it, it sounded like you said the B word. Yeah, I but know. But then you explained it. Wow. He's Croatian. We, we, we get your pass. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. <laughs> so how, you, how are you supposed to say accent? No, no, you, beaches. Beaches. <laughs> like, your accent is, I'm like, wow. But it's okay. Like, it's okay. Yeah. I understood. But did, then you correct the end, correct yourself, because you, you said what you said, but then you was like, and nice girls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's where you come from. Yeah, it's nice places to swim and, and, and nice girls. Yeah, nice. Like that, that, that's all you had to tell us about your, where you come from. Uh, you don't have to finish no more. So if that's what you like, talk to Boova. All right. It's cool. Nice. Great vacation country, by the way. Great vacation. Yeah, basically, that's what you just told us in the beginning. Yeah. And that's it. That's, that's the, the, the bottom of my country. It's great for vacation. End of story. <laughs> what is your favorite food? Oh, uh, I don't have a favorite food. Really, like, I don't have, like, favorite, favorite food. Mm -hmm. But I don't like to eat uh, shells. You said shell Clams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shells. I avoid shells. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, not a, it's similar to cherries, but not cherries. It's the other, like, it's sour. Cherries are like a sweet, and this is like sour. Is it the fruit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, fruit? it's similar like cherry. Similar to like cherry. Yeah. And it's sour? Yeah, yeah. The cherries are sweet, mm -hmm. and this is like a sour. Anyway, I don't like that, and uh, avoiding the McDonald's. I don't like McDonald's. Since I get food poison, I don't eat fast food, generally. I don't like I was the big fan, but not anymore. Thank you for your. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have, Thank I, you. I, I don't have like a favorite, favorite food I can eat mm. every day. I it's, a, it's okay. Yeah. What kind of music you like? Balkan music. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, you want an explanation for that? No, nah, we don't need to explain nothing. <laughs> nah, we don't need to explain it. Nah. So when I said Balkan music, it's uh, basically Serbian music and uh, Bosnian, Serbian, ex-Yugoslavia artist that is like, that I'm listening a lot. I don't mind to listen like hip hop, R&B, rock. But hip hop, when I refer to hip hop, I like the old school stuff more. Mm -hmm. And uh, rock, I also like some kind of rock music. I can also listen ballet, ballades, ballets, ballets, ballades, like it's slow music, rock ballades. Only thing I don't like is like metal and heavy metal and uh, techno house. It's like, it's like a big no no, especially techno. Techno is like, I kill you for techno, man. Fuck no. You know, like that? That's not a music, man. My bad. I'm sorry. What is something you want to do after basketball? Yeah, I keep thinking. I don't know. My dream, my dream job was like that. With my dream job, like that, I think would be perfect to do is like to be development coach for the bigs, teaching fundamentals and stuff for the bigs in some club. To work with young prospects. Yeah, I hear that. That's that's like I think I'll be the best at. I like that. Yeah. What are your values? My values as a person. Who else are you? <laughs> <laughs>
uh, in my opinion, I think I'm like like a good guy, honest, fair, and uh, and funny. Are you funny? You think I'm not? What you think my value is? The very yeah. question is this to you, man. I cannot like answer for myself. I, I, I think your values are perfect. I want a diplomatic answer. <laughs> Do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can like call this a hidden talent, but I can memorize a lot of stuff that is like doesn't have any values like information from the past or for the quizzes i can remember a lot of this let's say like dumb information that can only help you quiz not like in real life like i got a lot of this type of oh you got like you're like good for like maybe games or something like tv games or something like this yeah like facts yeah. like things yeah, that yeah, it yeah. has no, no it's just it's just you it's just things that yeah. information to know yeah, yeah. Information though that I'm like really like good at like but not like like you said, there is no value skill <laughs> Well, that's the end of the podcast. I really oh, thank you. thank you so much. It was really I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank man, you. thank you for coming. I'm glad that you know I, I was blessed to have the opportunity to be your first podcast. So oh, yeah. that means a lot. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you all for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the show.